Hey everybody, it's me, Jason, and I'm back for another video. And, and this time I want to talk about um, a new book by my friend Vivek Shreya, and it is called I'm Afraid of Men. I'm afraid of men because it was men who taught me to fear. I'm afraid of men because it was men who taught me to fear the word girl by turning it into a weapon they used to hurt me. I'm afraid of men because it was men who taught me to hate and eventually destroy my femininity. I'm afraid of men because it was men who taught me to fear the extraordinary parts of myself. So begins I'm Afraid of Men, the latest book from artist, musician, and writer Vivek Shreya. So as many of you might know, I love Vivek's work. I, I think about it often and deeply and I return to it. And um, her work is no stranger to this channel. Um, I've made two videos previously about, about her work, one about She of the Mountains, her first novel, and then another about Even This Page is White, which is her first collection of, of poetry. And, um, and I've also interviewed Vivek for um, Glass Buffalo magazine, and I can link that below if you want to check it out. So uh, I'm Afraid of Men does what those who've already come to know and love Vivek's work uh, are, are familiar with. Um, it's urgent and incisive writing, uh, and, and it's as compassionate as it is challenging. It's it's work that asks the writer to, uh, or sorry, the reader to, to confront what uh, assumptions we may have about gender and violence and power, um, these things that we've inherited, and and works to ask us to to leave those assumptions behind. So Vivek, who came out as a trans woman in 2016. Uh, charts in this book her experience with, with gender, chronicling the experiences where gender was imposed and policed, um, some, something that was used to, to threaten her, and something that she learned to eventually master. Um, you know, in an interview with Rachel Chen, she talks about, about the impositional and surveillance force of gender. As a very feminine teenager, I'd feel like I was constantly corrected with my behavior and my appearance by other male teenagers or male adults who corrected me through repeatedly mocking me. I learned to be a man because I learned that there was something about my behavior and my appearance that was inherently wrong. And the only way to make the boys stop taunting me was to learn to be one of them. That's what I'm talking about when I refer to imposed masculinity. That wasn't my choice. I often try to imagine who I might have been if I wasn't called fag or gay every day of my life for six years from junior high to high school. I will never know who that person might have been. Instead, I adopted masculinity as a way to survive. So Vivek teases this out in her novel Sheave the Mountains as well, which pits the bisexual protagonist against these controlling forces of sexuality and gender. So in this novel, the protagonist is told that, you know, he's not only gay, but that he's a certain kind of gay man, and he is he's a bottom, due to his thin and therefore um, red as feminine body. Um, and so in, in I'm Afraid of Men, she kind of elaborates on these layers of control and, and uh, the misogyny that undergirds them. You know, in my video about She the Mountains, I, I talked a bit about Foucault and the concept of biopower, the ways in which bodies are, are controlled and surveilled along particular lines, um, and gender and sexuality are probably chief among those. Um, and, and these theories, I think, certainly apply to, to this book, too. Um, Vivek writes... Uh, when I look at photos of myself from my late 20s on, I feel mournful about how much my body has been shaped by men. Through my interaction with you and my subsequent immersion into gay culture, I quickly learn that gay men will find me desirable only if I'm muscular. Simultaneously, I learn that it's partly my skinniness that makes me appear gay to straight men. In both instances, my thinness amplifies my femininity, which is consistently seen as a loathsome quality that needs to be eradicated. Gaining weight becomes a miracle solution to both of my problems. Consumption is key to masculinity. Like, I love this sentence. I think it says exactly what masculinity does. It, it consumes everything. And, and, and to follow that word a little further, it is also consumptive. It's, it's something that's wasting. It's, uh, you know, it takes up all that it can. It's an illness. Um, and it's good for nobody. Um, so I think that I'm Afraid of Men renders visible the ways that, that masculinity uh, regulates lives and then also fails those who, who need to, um, for whatever reason, 
uh, fall within its categories. Of course, as we see in the title, I'm Afraid of Men, uh, fear pervades the book. It, it's an articulation of what it means to be afraid of masculinity, of men, and, and what might come from that fear. Uh, Vivek has pointed out the compulsion we might feel to, to show a brave face, to show courage and, and strength when we're brought to face something fearful, um, something that inspires fear. Um, you know, she says that uh, I'm someone who struggles with depression, which is a different but related or adjacent emotion to fear. The thing that I've had to learn over and over again is that you can't get anywhere by repressing it. You can't get anywhere by saying you're not sad. The only way to move me through depression is to name it. To say I'm depressed today or I'm not feeling good today. I think fear is the same. I don't know if I will ever not be afraid of men. For me it feels that much more important to name the fact that I am. My resilience is tied to naming my fear. You know, in doing this, like in this phrase, in, in this line of thinking, in this book, um, Vivek makes me think of feminist scholar Sarah Ahmed, who, who writes in her book, The Promise of Happiness, that to narrate unhappiness can be affirmative. It can gesture toward another world, even if we're not given a vision of the world as it might exist after all the walls of misery are brought down. Uh, and this is what I see Vivek doing, you know, in naming her fear. She gestures towards possibilities of what could be, what alternatives might look like, um, what it would look like to live in a world where, where women and gender nonconforming people, uh, you know, don't have to live in fear. You know, in her book, Notes from a Feminist Killjoy, Erin Wonker devotes an entire section to rape culture, the ways in which rape culture and also fear have embedded themselves into the daily lives of women and gender nonconforming folks, women and people of color, queer individuals, um, you know, and asks, asks why we've, asks us to look at that differently. Instead of saying and accepting that, you know, well, women just shouldn't walk alone at night. Why, why we accept that instead of asking why, why we've built that into, into our society, why we accept that, why we say, yeah, of course, women, women just shouldn't walk alone at night instead of saying how fucked up it is that because of gender and power, violence, we come to accept that. Um, you know, or, or in the Netflix comedy special, Nanette by Hannah Gadsby, she says, uh, you know, I'm not a man hater, but I'm afraid of men. Um, I see the book, I'm Afraid of Men working in, in the same lines as these thinkers, Sarah Ahmed, of Aaron Wunker, of Hannah Gadsby. Um, you know, I think that it's so important to read this book, to think about it, um, to consume these types of, of cultural products that really ask us to reconsider how it is we kind of shape our societal lives. I'm afraid of men not because of any singular encounter with a man, I'm afraid of men because of the cumulative damage caused by the everyday experiences I've recounted here and by those untold and by those I continue to face. You know, I'm, I'm Afraid of Men is a powerful and important book. I, as often as those words are used and overused, uh, it's really the case here. Um, you know, and I, I would urge you all to buy a copy and to read it and to reread it and to buy a copy for whoever in your life needs to read it or go to your library and request it or, or whatever. If you're, a, if you're an instructor, you teach this book. You know, find ways to get this conversation circulating in your own circles. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a world-making book in the way that Sarah Ahmed theorizes um, and in the way that Ursula K. Le Guin, um, who, who appears in the book as an epigraph, as she states, I know that many men and even women are angry when women do speak, because in this barbaric society, when women speak truly, they speak subversively. They can't help it. If you're underneath, if you're kept down, you break out, you subvert. We are volcanoes. When we women offer our experiences as our truth, as human truth, all the maps change. There are new mountains. So I want to thank you all for watching and, and to thank you know, Vivek for the generous work that she does, the tireless work. This book is incredible. Um, it was an honor to read it. 
thank you to, to Penguin Canada, who, who made sure that I got a copy uh, a few months ago so that I could read it and think about it and come to you all and, and let you know what I thought. Um, I can't say enough about this book. It's, it's an important one. So don't miss out. Go pick it up. And if you have read it, please let me know down below what you thought. And until next time, goodbye.